Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm going to do a detailed review on this Aldi brand single serve coffee maker. They just came out with it. It's $30 at, at Aldi. Comes in three colors, black, white, and green. So here it is on Aldi's website. There, the, I really wanted the green color, but they didn't have it. And there's the white one. They don't keep many of these in stock, so you, they may be out of them when you go to get one. So I thought I would try out their K-Cups. So this is a K-Cup and coffee grounds. It says it does standard K-Cups and coffee grounds. But I picked up some K-Cups from Aldi. I'm gonna try them out and we're gonna see how they taste. So the machine looks really nice. Um, it's got a water reservoir in the back. It holds 40 ounces. That's where you put the water in. It's got an on off switch. So when it's plugged in, the green light is on. That doesn't mean it's on. When you press the button, that's what turns it on. And then when that starts, when that's flashing, that means it's heating up the water. So there's a reservoir, there's, there's a water reservoir in here, and then there's a, there's a tank that gets filled up with water and heated, and then it gets shot through the um, cake up. So it's got this metal lever on top, which you're gonna have to lift up in order to pull this tray out. Now it comes shipped with both the K cup. It's got both the K cup and the coffee grounds. So when you're doing this, you're only gonna use one at a time. So we're gonna take the, so if you wanna do a K cup, that's the filter basket. And I ran some fresh water through, that's why it's all wet. When you first set it up, you wanna rinse it out. And this is the K cup. That's got the standard needle in the bottom. And so, like I said, this is the tray. It slides in like this. But when I want to do a K-cup, I'm just, I'm just going to put the K-cup in it. And there's a hole. It makes you think you're putting it in backwards, but there's a hole there. And then this rests on that trip, that tray. You're going to put your K-cup in. And you slide that. And then you close that. And anytime you've got this lever up, the green light changes to red indicating that you can't do anything. You, the only way to get this thing to brew is you have to have that lever down. So it's got a drip tray and it comes up and it can sit really nice, a little bit higher up for like a normal coffee cup. And this fits a standard, that's a seven inch travel mug. It fits in there just fine. It could go a little bit more. You can remove this drip tray. And this is dishwasher safe. You can put both these in the top rack of the dishwasher. So again, if I want to remove that tray, I'm going to lift this handle up. Then I can pull this tr the tray out. Okay, so I've got the tray out. So say I want to do a K-cup. There is one thing you have to do when you want to do a K-cup. So this is a normal. You can use any standard K-cup. These just happen to be the ones from Aldi. But you could use um, a Keurig K-cup. You've got to manually puncture the bottom. So see how it's kind of sticking up? They want you to pierce that bottom. Normally, a, a Keurig machine kind of does it for you when it, you close the lid. This one, though, you got to do it yourself. And it's not really hard. You'll get used to it. So see, when I pull that up, it poked the hole. That needle down there poked the hole right there. So then I'm going to put the K-cup holder in the tray. There's that little um, hole there that lines up. And then we're going to slide this in. And then again, you just slide it in, and then you're gonna push this lever down. That's what's gonna pierce the top of the K-cup. See, if I take this out, when I, when I push that lever down, it pierced the top. That's what's gonna shoot the hot water in the K-cup, and it's gonna come out the bottom right there into your cup. So again, this thing only has two buttons for 15 ounce and eight ounce. Again, that's on, and then you, you that's the power button. So you hit the power button, and now it lights up these blue lights. When this green light is flashing, that means it's heating up the water. It's not ready to brew. You can press these buttons, but it won't brew it until it's ready. So when that light is steady, that means the tank inside there is heated up the water. Now for a K-cup, I normally do 8 ounces. 15 ounces through a K-cup, it's just a little a weak or watered down for me. So I do 8 ounces. So again, the machine looks really nice. It's got a three-foot cord, no cord storage, just a 
two prong outlet. Front to back is about nine inches. Side to side is about six. It's about 13 inches tall. And with the lid, it's about 17 and a quarter. So if you watched my first video, it was a setup. So we filled it up to the max and we ran three 15 ounces through the machine with no K cup in there so that we could kind of flush it out. So I've already done the flush out, but this is where the water goes. It's got a really nice reservoir. There is no filter, like carbon filter. There's a little filter down there that kind of filters out big particles, but nothing like a um, carbon filter. This reservoir is not removable. So you're gonna have to have something to fill up this reservoir, like an old pot or something. Okay, so we're gonna put water in it. Right now it's only at the 16 ounce mark. I'm gonna fill it all the way up to the 40 ounce. Now you don't wanna overfill this. It does have a little hole that it will overflow in the back. So overall the machine looks really nice. It doesn't take up a big footprint. Like I said, the green one I think would have been a little nicer looking, but all they had was black. So just to show you one last time how you put the cake up in, you lift that handle up. There's where the K-cup goes. You're going to press it down, pierce the bottom of it, make sure it's nice and flush. Otherwise, it won't fit in there. And then you're going to slide this in until it clicks. Push the handle down. It's already on, but if it wasn't on, you'd hit the power button. And then we're just going to hit the 8-ounce button. And then there's kind of a pump. So that light's flashing, and you can hear a pump. Okay, so it's starting to brew. It started to brew right away. It takes about three or four minutes for it to heat get up to temperature, but once it's up to temperature, it starts brewing right away. Now it does splash a little bit. It's probably a good idea to have the drip tray up one so it's not splashing all over. So it's not really loud when it's brewing the coffee. It just sounds like a little water pump pumping. There you have it. So that took about a minute and a half to brew that eight ounces of coffee. You're not going to want to touch any of this or lift this lever. Just let it do its thing. Now see the lights are on steady. Now I can remove it. And again, there's the coffee. We're going to check the temperature. That's pretty standard. That's about 160. That's a really hot cup of coffee. So let's see how it tastes. This is the Fair Trade Certified Columbium. It's got a good smell to it. Well, that's that's not a bad cup of coffee. Um, it tastes a little different. I'm not quite used to it. I'm, I've been drinking Voldridge for a while, but yeah, that's a pretty good cup of coffee. And eight ounces, I think, is about the right. So 15 ounces would take a lot bigger cup, and it would be pretty watered down. That's about what a travel mug is. 15 ounces is about what a travel mug is. And again, next time I would probably have this drip tray so it did kind of splatter around. I would definitely move this, this drip tray up one and brew my, it brew my eight ounces like this. You're not gonna get near as, as much splashing. So the nice thing about this reservoir is so, I still got a bunch of water left. So I only have to fill this water reservoir once in a while, and then um, I can do a bunch of brews from it. Now let's open this up. We gotta lift this lever. It's really easy to lift. Then we're gonna pull this tray out. Now this is where the K cup is. Now it might drip on you. Yeah, this one's wanting to drip a little bit. 
And be careful, this can be a little hot, but there's the K-cup. So it pierced the hole in the top and the bottom and ran that hot water through there. Okay, so there's the K-cup holder again. You gotta pull it out. I like to cut these open. I've never seen um, what the inside of a Aldi one looks like. So I'm gonna cut the bottom side open. Okay, so I cut the bottom open. There's a really nice paper filter there. Now I'm gonna cut the top open. Okay, so I cut the top open. We've got two tablespoons of coffee grounds in there. So these filters are nice. You're gonna see that a paper filter prevents sediment. And that's, I'm gonna show you. So when we brew coffee with this basket with just normal coffee grounds, we're probably gonna get a little sediment. But these K-cups are made really nice. These are the Aldi's K-cups. And that looks like really nice coffee. And again, I'm going to put it back together. Now, if you want to store it like this, so this is how it ships. It ships to you with both filters installed. But the directions say they don't want you to use both. It's either or. But if you want to store it like this, you can. Otherwise, you're probably going to be storing this basket somewhere else. And you'll just always have this one, the K-cup, in there. And then you're ready to go. So with this being a K-cup, you, your possibilities are endless because they make all kinds of K-cups. They make teas, they make hot chocolates, they make all kinds of different coffees. They make cappuccinos. The cappuccinos are kind of all-in-one where it's got like condensed milk in there and it's just like a powder. But your possibilities are endless. This thing will do any standard K-cup. So anything you see at Walmart or at Amazon on the shelf... Um, you'll be able to do a K-cup. Now, you'll only be able to do it at the 8-ounce setting and the 15. So the 15 is, I would think, probably going to be for like your teas or maybe if we do a lot of coffee grounds with this. But for a K-cup, you're probably mainly going to use the 8-ounce and like for some of the other drinks, maybe the lattes or the teas, you might use a 15-ounce because a 15-ounce is a lot of water. Okay, so now let's brew some coffee grounds. I got some Folgers coffee grounds. Now the manual says don't fill it up above the max. Now, it's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. It says max and it's got a line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how many tablespoons it takes to get it to that max line. There's one. There's two. So we're getting really, really, really close. Do about a half. Yeah. So two and a half tablespoons. So to me, I've done the math. That's about an eight ounce serving of coffee. So because normal, when you look at the directions on the side here, it says one, um, one tablespoon per serving, which is six fluid ounces. So we can get two and a half. You know, you might be able to get away with the 15 ounce. To me, I think it's going to taste pretty weak. I'll try it. The 8 ounce is probably going to taste a little better. But it's whatever flavor you, I mean, it's whatever you like. You can brew it either at the 8 or the 15. It's just, this machine only gives you two options. Keurigs are pretty good. They give you about three or four options sometimes for different brew sizes. So I got my coffee grounds in there. Now we got to take the K-cup holder out. And then this is going to go just like that. You can see it kind of fits in there like it's supposed to go. Then we're going to slide it in. So then we're going to push this lever down. So I've got my coffee mug under. The light's flashing. That means it's heating the water up. So I'm going to press this 8 ounce. And now it has stopped flashing. So you got to wait for it to stop flashing. Now I can press the 8 ounce. And again, it just kind of sounds like a pump. And it's brewing about the same as with the K-Cup. It's kind of a nice slow brew. Keurigs might be a little faster. Okay, so after about a minute and a half, it finishes up the brewing. Let's check the temperature. About the same, about 160. That's pretty hot. Now something I'm noticing already, I'm noticing the sediment already 
on the side of the cup. Now, I don't know if sediment is good or bad for you, but I know um, when you use a filter, a paper filter, like when you use a regular coffee maker with paper filter, you don't get sediment. And with K-cups, you don't get sediment because a K-cup has a small paper filter in there too. But I'm going to let this sit. I've tasted it. It tastes really good. It actually tastes a little richer. And I think that might be from the sediment. But uh, I'm going to let this sit, and then we'll show you how the sediment is. But while we're letting this sit... So we want to remove this tray. Let's lift up the handle and then we just simply pull this out. So there's, it, it did a pretty good job with the coffee grounds. I don't see, they're not kind of, I was expecting maybe they'd be all over. It did pretty good. So I'm going to take this filter basket out. Now I can recycle these coffee grounds or throw them away, but I will have a little bit more cleanup work when I use this reusable filter. But yeah, it looked like it did a pretty good job. I don't see, I just see a few coffee grounds kind of up here. So maybe the, when it was splashed in the water, it got up there a little bit maybe. But no, it did a really good job. Okay, so this cleaned up really well. And now we can just put it back in there. If we're gonna do coffee grounds again. Now I looked online. I don't see a paper filter for this. This is kind of an oddball basket. I'm gonna do another video where I do have, a, I'm gonna use a reusable cake up. I've got this reusable K-cup and they make paper filters for these reusable K-cups. So I'm gonna do another video and then we would just use this in the K-cup holder. Okay, so I just wanna show you, this was the first one, the K-cup. Yeah, We don't get hardly any sediment at all in there. Now I wanna show you the second one, this is with the filter basket. See, I'm getting there's quite a bit of sediment. Again, I'm not, I don't know if, but you're going to taste that at the end. That is, that's a lot of sediment. So, again, the best solution might be just to use a reusable K cup if you want to use your own coffee grounds. So cleanup is pretty simple. I can throw this in the dishwasher once in a while. Um, and same with this K-cup basket. I can throw this in the top rack of the dishwasher. I can put this in the dishwasher. You're going to have to wipe this off once in a while. And I just wanted to show you. So that's what it looks like. There is a sharp needle up there. Be careful. That's what pierces the top when you move the lever. When I move that lever up and down, it's moving that needle up and down. So one thing you may want to check, so say I've been using this for a little bit, say I want to do a 15 ounce, so I really haven't been adding water, I'm going to want to make sure I've got at least 15 ounces, so, because this thing will brew, you know, if you only got 8 ounces, it's just going to, even though you selected the 15 ounce, it'll just brew uh, 8 ounces, but, so make sure you got plenty of water in your water reservoir, we're going to do a 15 ounce now. So we're going to do another K-cup, so I've got my filter, I've got the K-cup. Put, so the hole goes there. I've got to, I've got to pierce this down. I've already pierced it. But I would, if it wasn't pierced already, I would press this down. You're not going to get poked by any needle down here. You can, you know, the needle's way down in there. So make sure that's flush. And now I can insert it in here. And then I can lower the handle. Now I'm going to do the 15 ounce. This is a little bigger drink. you got to have a kind of a bigger, bigger cup. Let's do a 15 ounce coffee. So it kind of pauses. So sometimes like it's bru it brews for a while, you get a nice steady trickle. Then it kind of makes you think it's stopped, like the water stops coming out, but then it starts up again. So that seems to be normal. It does splatter. So I am seeing lots of droplets kind of come out all over. So this is about the loudest I've heard it. That, bu that pump does get sort of loud in the middle of it. And it kind of quiets down a little bit and then it kind of gets loud. 
So I think the reason it kind of stops, it has to heat the water before it can... It must not have a very big tank in there because it stops sometimes. And then it starts flowing again. So it probably has to heat that water up in the inside before it lets it come through the Keiko. Now I can tell this is a pretty weak coffee because it's pretty clear coming out right now. Again, the same temperature, yeah, 160. So that's pretty good for a big 15 ounce drink. Okay, kind of makes a loud swoosh when it's done. Now this is a really watered down coffee. This is a K-cup coffee with 15 ounces. And it does kind of drip on you after you're done for a while. But I think the I like the 15 ounce for teas. I've done a, a Keurig makes some pretty nice teas, and it seems like when they're brewed at the higher strength or the more water, they taste really good. And coffees need to be kind of concentrated. So one of the last things I like to do is I like to look at the box art and see what they're promoting. So it's compatible with single serve. Yeah, that's K-Cups. Has a reusable filter for using your coffee grounds. Yeah. Mounting slots for the adjustable height. Yeah, that was nice. Filter release lever. That's the big lever you release. Removable brew basket. That's nice because you're nice. It's a, nice you're able to clean that. Again. And then... Um, so it claims that it's got a water tank lid. Okay. It does have a water level indicator. Multiple brew. Well, it's just got two. It comes with a three-year warranty. So, yeah, this was just released. I, I'm not even sure how to pronounce the name. But uh, yeah, I think it's Ambiana. Yeah, I'm not sure. I would think they'd want a name you could pronounce pretty easy. But So, again, these are sold at Aldi's. This was $30. It comes in three colors. It seems like a pretty solid um, single serve cake up. And you know, $30, that's a really good price for a single serve. Uh, Walmart sells one for 20. This beats the Walmart one. The Walmart one is really cheap. This one does not look really cheap. I mean, it is mostly plastic. I was really wanting the green one. The white one would look nice. Um, you know, this one looks really nice. And it's definitely got some features over the $20 Walmart one. And Amazon's got some $20 ones. They're kind of all the same. But I do like that it has a reservoir. So it's got a nice big reservoir. You know, you can brew quite a few 8-ounce coffees in the morning before you got to fill it back up. So this was my detailed review. I, if, leave, uh, if you got any comments down below or questions about this coffee maker, leave them below. I check my comments on a daily basis, and I'll, I'll just brew a quick cup of coffee for you or kind of take a picture for you if you need something shown. But also, uh, I'm going to be doing another video. Like I said, I'm going to do a reusable cake up. And then I'm also going to show you how to clean it. So once in a while, this does not have a descale light or anything. But if you notice that your coffee is starting to not get as warm or it's taking too long to brew, it's time to descale it. And we can descale this with white vinegar and I'm going to use the Keurig um, descaling solution. So check out those other two videos. And again, thanks everybody for their support. I was really impressed with these, these K-Cups from um, Aldi. I, I was kind of unaware... Aldi had a uh, K cups, and I saw a news article come across on my um, tablet last night, and they were talking about this, how it was kind of a good deal, and all that. So I thought I rushed out and bought one. So again, thanks everybody. I hope this video helps. Um, if you could, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.